Hi, everybody. For those of you who didn't know, I'm actually a brony, which is an adult fan of the children's show My Little Pony, uh, Friendship is Magic. And, of course, in the past, I had some difficulty explaining that uh, to strangers. And at the beginning, also, uh, uh, to my wife. Uh, well, she understands now, but, you know, people... Uh, had a difficult time understanding um, why an a adult man uh, uh, would like a show intended for little girls with cute little ponies. And when I ex tried to explain it to them, I tried to explain it to them by comparing it uh, to uh, books like Animal Farm or Gulliver's Travels. You also have animals, but it's not really, you know, for example, in Gulliver's Travels, you also have talking horses, but it's not, and, and you have, uh, uh, you have, uh, uh, flying cities and all that kind of stuff, which you also have in My Little Pony. Uh, but it's actually not about that. You know, if you read, uh, a Gulliver's Travels, you read it the first time, uh, and you read it as a child, you will think, oh, it's a fairy tale or whatever. You read it again as an adult, it works on a different level. And you realize uh, uh, that it's not about uh, talking horses and stuff, uh, but that it's actually a metaphor and uh, that it's actually... Uh, uh, that it's actually addressing, uh, uh, for example, political issues, among other things, that at that time would have been difficult to address directly. So I always use that as an example to, uh, to, to, to try to explain uh, why I watch My Little Pony. Because uh, the way I see it, My Little Pony is kind of similar. It, work, it also works on, uh, you know, you can watch it as a child and you say, oh, cute little talking ponies. And um, you watch it again as an adult and you realize that there are some things in there uh, that uh, are also, for example, that are even about political issues. And uh, here is a very good example of that. Uh, one of the most recent episodes uh, from uh, season five, or actually the uh, the first two episodes from season five, they're actually addressing communism in a show for little girls. And now, of course, I had some discussions uh, um, with other people who say, oh, yeah, well, it's not really about communism. Of course, they can't do it directly. You know, if they, you know, if they really uh, do it directly, then again, it would not be appropriate, especially for little children, and it would get uh, censored by the network. So uh, they're doing the same thing as, you know, like in Gulliver's Travels. They basically put it in metaphors. And they, they make many references. And now what I'm going to do is uh, point out some of those references because some people uh, uh, couldn't believe uh, uh, that they were actually um, addressing communism. So in this episode, they are led uh, to a village, to a town. And at first it seems like a nice village, but uh, they notice right away that something is strange about this village. Uh, well, first off, it's, it's the, um, it's the village itself, um, with all the houses looking basically the same and all the houses being kind of gray. And the entire town is, uh, the, all the houses in the town are in the formation of, of an equal sign. Now, if you watch it from above, you can see, oh, it's, the entire town is in the shape of an equal sign. Um, <clears throat> and when they go uh, into the village, everybody uh, seems very nice. It, it, it seems uh, almost too good because everybody's smiling, everybody's happy, and they're asking, oh, yeah, everything is fine. We never had trouble here. We don't even know what trouble is. Everything is perfect in our community. And they emphasize the community part. So that aspect had some uh, people uh, who, are, who I talked about this. Uh, they said, "Well, it's not about communism. It's about it's about a cult, um, because they also have this kind of cult leader that I will address later on. But it's not really a cult leader. It's it's more of you know just it could be a communist leader, just the same. And um, it's actually um, see, I don't I don't like to use words uh, uh, like cult." Um, because in English, in German, the word, the word cult means the same, but it doesn't have an adjective meaning. Um, but in, in, in English, uh, this word has uh, developed a very adjective meaning. Um, 
and it didn't originally have that. So it's uh, it nowadays it gets used a lot uh, to attack um, religious minorities. For example, the Communist Party in China is uh, doing that probably the most. Uh, they are always trying to label, for example, the Dalai Lama. Um, as a cult leader, they say, "Oh, yeah, the uh, uh, Tibetans—they're all—it's uh, a cult, and they're following the cult leader, the Dalai Lama, and and he's like a dictator, and they all have to to follow him and do what he says, and 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 and, and he's like this evil capitalist uh, 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 dictator, cult leader, and and uh, and any religious minority, which is basically every religious minority." Uh, in China gets attacked this way and gets labeled uh, 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 a cult. Of course, they're only doing that in, in English because, uh, of course, in, in Chinese, they have other um, uh, uh, derogatory terms they can use. Uh, so, uh, but I always thought it was funny because they were like, oh, yeah, well, the Dalai Lama is a cult leader, evil cult leader. And, and then they have those uh, people that, that, that were transformed from uh, the religious minority they're trying to attack and they say oh yeah thank you communist party for saving me from the evil cult leader the Dalai Lama or whoever it is and, uh, and they saved me and now I know the truth thanks to the communist party I'm so thankful to the communist gods who helped me see the truth and they talk like that and 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 and, talk, and and this gets broadcast in in a communist propaganda in China, and they don't seem to realize the uh, uh, the contradiction there. They don't seem to realize that there's something strange about this. Um, well, well, maybe they do, but if they do, they're afraid to say anything. <clears throat> uh, you know, because in China, you of course not allowed. Uh, to criticize uh, the Communist Party openly, and you're not allowed to voice your opinions openly. Uh, well, uh, it's at least uh, always a little dangerous if you do. So many people are afraid. So they they know uh, maybe subconsciously somewhere they know that this kind of propaganda is uh, uh, <laughs> is ridiculous and is actually uh, actually kind of showing that the Communist Party itself is more like a cult. Um, but they are too afraid uh, to say anything. So they go along with this kind of ridiculous propaganda. So anyway. <clears throat> Believe it or not, but all those things were actually addressed in this episode. All those aspects about communism. Um, so, and, and there were actually many references. So, anyway, um, in this uh, village, uh, they're emphasizing equality. The houses are equal, the people are equal, and uh, if you know My Little Pony, they have a... Um, uh, all the ponies have a very distinct feature, and namely they all have kind of special talents. And you can tell right away because uh, they have a little symbol on their flank which uh, represents their individual talents. And no uh, two cutie marks are the same normally because they all have individual talents. Uh, so they're all, um, uh, well, they're all individual, right? So everybody has special talents. And they're unique to that uh, pony. <clears throat> so, but with the uh, ponies in this village, uh, they all have the exact same cutie mark. And uh, this is something that uh, was never shown before because previously no two ponies had the same cutie mark because they were all unique because they represent their, t their talents, their individuality. Uh, but in that village, all, uh, all the ponies have the exact same cutie mark. Uh, uh, which is an equal sign. <laughs> so, uh, and, and when they talk to them, they also say, yeah, in this, in our community, and they emphasize the community a lot, the community part. It's not so much a village as it is a community. They're emphasizing the community. Um, in our village, all ponies are equal and uh, uh, we don't boast with our individuality and our special talents because we're not individuals here and we don't have special talents here. We're all the same. That's why we all took the same cutie mark, this equal sign, and everybody is equal. And that's also why, for example, the houses are equal. And it's not only, you, you don't, you don't only see that with the houses and the cutie marks, but also, um, the color of the, the, those ponies itself and the entire village. It's kind of gray. There are no, there are no vibrant colors here, except when they do a parade later on, they have banners and stuff and they use a little vibrant colors there. But I'll get into that later. 
Um, but normally uh, they all look kind of a little grayish. The houses look kind of grayish. The ponies look kind of grayish. Everything is a little gray. And of course, everybody is the same. Nobody has any individual talents or something like Everybody is the same. Everybody works as a team. They emphasize that a lot. And um, then they take them to their leader, uh, which is... Uh, uh, the only pony who uh, who is a little more colorful than the others, and it's also her house, interestingly, is outside the formation of... Because I said um, uh, the entire village is in the shape of an equal sign, but her house is outside of that formation of the equal sign. And uh, she's also a little more equal than the others. Um, as is revealed later on, uh, she actually still kept her uh, uh, special talents, um, and uh, she she's basically the only one who is who is who is more equal, you know. So, uh, and 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 she also you can also see it uh, with the colors because uh, she's not as gray as the others. She she has a little more color in in her. And um, anyway, she steps out. She explains about the village, about their philosophy, what I just said, you know, about equality, blah, blah, blah. And then she starts this eerie parade where, where everybody, where the entire community of the town uh, participates and they, and they uh, uh, uh marching together and they have banners and they sing this song and they have the way, um, the, the melody of the song, it's very... Um, it, it uses, uh, they have a lot of, you know, bells and whistles and drums and trumpets. It's, it's, it's a kind of melody, you know, um, you have in World War Two area, uh, era, <laughs> World War Two era, uh, 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 Nazi propaganda songs, you know, that kind of melody, marching and, and, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, and, and one of the, uh, producers actually, uh, uh, said this, that, uh, uh, th this song is a little inspired <laughs> by those kind of uh, propaganda songs. So um, if you uh, listen to it, you will notice right away. So they're basically singing this propaganda song and marching together. And the song is all about, uh, you know, equality and how how they're all equal, how they about their philosophy and uh, about uh, and actually mentions that their community there is a, supposed to be a kind of utopia. They actually mention the word utopia, and there were also you know many little things uh, doing that song uh, in the lyrics themselves. They're very eerie, very it's it's a, almost scary a little there are some elements that that are almost scary for example there's one line that says uh, in our town we work as a team you can't have a nightmare if you never dream uh, and uh, there are many little things like uh, uh for example uh they they're emphasizing that they're all singing together uh this that they're all singing the song together but, but of course the only person who is not singing along with the others uh, is uh, their leader. She's actually not singing this song of equality at all. She just uh, shouts commands <laughs> at all the others and, um, you know, forces them to get into line and stuff. There, there are many little scenes, you know, for example, there's one pony that's uh, kind of dancing out of sync and she immediately uh, corrects her <laughs> and there is a um, there is another pony who has a different haircut than the others, and she all immediately corrects the haircut and, uh, you know, uh, makes sure that nobody steps out of line, that they're all marching in sync, except for her, of course. <laughs> so, and then after this, uh, this uh, propaganda parade, whatever, is over, their leader enlist some uh, uh, their leader assigns uh, some ponies uh, to show uh, the new arrivals um, and um, uh, uh, shown how their community works y you have to keep in mind this is a after all this is a show for little children so you cannot uh, if, if you want to ask communism you cannot put into their uh, uh, you know complicated things about 
uh, the, the economy and stuff. But they have put in things about the economy, but it, it's just, of course, it cannot be too complicated. So they're shown around, they're shown the shops and stuff. And what you notice by the way is that, um, basically, for, for example, the first shop they encounter is a, um, is a, a closing shop, uh, with, you know, a shop with closes. Uh, with clo- I'm, I'm sorry about my accent, but you know what I mean. Uh, a tailor shop, okay? Let's call it a tailor shop. And they, and they have, uh, um, and they have those uh, scarves that they're selling there. And, um, the clerk tells them that this month they have scarves. Own, only scarves. And the scarves are all the same. <laughs> and then later on they get, go to a bakery. They ask, uh, what kind of, uh, you know, baked goods they have. And she says muffins. And then comes a long, long pause because they only have muffins. That's all they have. <laughs> so they say, then of course, then they're thinking and, hmm, if it's like that, I will guess we'll take muffins. So it's, it's the only thing they have. And, um, of course, the muffins taste uh, dreadful and uh, the, the muffins, even the muffins look all the same and even the muffins look kind of gray and without color. And, uh, well, as they find out, the muffins don't taste any good. And um, the, basically the, the clerk working in the bakery shop explains to them that... Uh, um, <coughs> She basically could make better muffins, but she's not supposed to. Uh, you, you know, the, the, she's, she, she cannot bake what she wants. She, uh, has to bake, uh, what she's supposed to bake. <laughs> you know, and the same, same goes, uh, 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 uh for the tailor shop previously. It's also, it's, it's basically, uh, they're hinting at this, uh, uh, of course, going into a state, uh, uh, state economy, um, that would be too complicated for a children's show, but they're hinting at it. Basically, they're hinting at a state one economy here. You know, they cannot, uh, do what they want to do. They cannot produce what they want to produce. It's basically decided by the, by their leader, by the, by the, uh, <laughs> you know, by their party leader, by the, um, by the party, you know, um, by the state. So basically, they're hinting at a socialist economy here. It's it's actually very obvious. It's just that they, of course, <laughs> cannot make it too obvious because then it wouldn't be uh, appropriate for a children's show. It would be too complicated for children. But they um, they're hinting at it, you know, in this uh, child friendly manner. And um, after they ate uh, those muffins, which they didn't actually want to eat, so they had. Uh, one of them uh, eat all the muffins and pretend that they're good, even though she hated it and she gets all green. Anyway, after they forced, uh, after they're forced to eat all the muffins, the pony working in the bakery approaches them and and whispers uh, that they should, after they're finished, they should come in and go downstairs. Uh, they they should come into the bakery and go downstairs, and and she whispers that because. Um, the uh, uh, the leader not only assigned uh, ponies to uh, show them around, she at the same time actually also assigned ponies to watch them. And uh, there is a scene uh, where they look around and basically it looks like everybody's watching them. But there is uh, there also seems to be one uh, specific pony who's basically always following them around and who's always watching them. So, uh, they kind of try to, uh, shake his tail, uh, uh, you know, uh, get away from him and, um, and they meet, uh, downstairs, uh, in a bakery, uh, with, uh, some ponies. Um, and at first, uh, they're afraid and they think, oh, it might be a trap, but, uh, as it turns out, it's, uh, it's just, uh, that some of those ponies, basically there is an, kind of an underground movement. You know, it's, it's also something they're basically only hinting at. And because there is some ponies, because in, in, as, as, as has been, um, the premise is that, uh, uh, everybody is equal and everybody is happy. And everybody was telling them how happy they all are being equal. But that was only, uh, what they said when they first met and during the parade and stuff. And they basically had to say that.
You know, that was only the facade. Now that uh, they have an opportunity to meet with them in secret, um, they, it turns out that uh, at least some of them actually don't feel that way, even though they have to pretend that they, they feel that way and that they're happy uh, that way. But as it turns out, some ponies are not happy uh, being forced to be equal. Some ponies would like to, for example, the um, the pony in a bakery would love to uh, uh, bake other things. And uh, she she says how in the past she 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 used to bake all kinds of things and how good they tasted, and she would like to do that again. But she basically is not allowed to. But uh, then they ask, well, it's not that I'm not allowed to, she just doesn't, you know, there is no law saying that she, uh, she's not allowed to be different, but, but basically there is, <laughs> you know, it's kind of unspoken, and basically it turns out she's afraid. And this is actually what I, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the thing um, I wanted to talk about just now when I talked about China, um, you know, they, they're afraid. And and this is also what uh, is hinted at in in this scene is um, the uh, uh, the ponies are afraid in this in this case it's ponies of course you know they were uh, they were afraid uh, to uh, basically step out of line to they they were afraid to voice their own opinions to do their own things uh, uh, to express their individuality they were afraid you know because they are not supposed to do that. And um, she says, oh, well, uh, they ask if it is forbidden for them, uh, you know, to to be different. And it's not like it's forbidden, but actually it is. Uh, she says, well, we, we all could uh, get our individual talents back if we wanted to. They're all kept in this vault um, by their leader, of course. Uh, but she doesn't dare to. They're all afraid. They, they were even afraid just to talk to them and, and mention that they were unhappy. And uh, later, as it turns out, uh, uh, they were white. They should have been afraid because, of course, their leader doesn't want that. Uh, so, after this uh, secret um, meeting is over, the, let's call them the protagonist ponies, uh, speak to their leader and uh, ask about this uh, a vault uh, where all their individual talents are kept. And um, uh, she she shows it to them. She says that certainly uh, they will want basically their individual talents to to lock them up there as well, uh, because their individual talents are represented by their cutie marks. So um, she's keeping all the cutie marks in there, and she says, "Oh yeah, you you certainly will want to uh, put your cutie marks there as well." But of course, it's entirely up to you. It's your choice. Uh, but even earlier, she, uh, the leader pony was kind of breaking the fourth wall and talking to the audience. Um, there's so many little things, you know, uh, doing, uh, talking to the audience saying that, um, uh, certainly once a, uh, a princess has given up, uh, her special talents because one of the protagonist pony, ponies is a princess. So, um, she says, uh, that once, um, a princess has given up her special talents and joined them. It will um, help their cause. And she basically mentions that her goal is to basically expand uh, basically to the entire world and uh, force her ideology onto basically everyone. <laughs> and this is also very similar to, you know, uh, to the, uh, to what they, they you know, you know. I don't. I don't have to explain this to you, right? You know about uh, how communism works and uh, how they are talking about. You know, they're not being any countries, and uh, basically what they mean is the whole world being uh, controlled by the communist party. <clears throat> and um, they uh, they say, oh yeah, this is a good thing, and communism is a good thing, and everybody will want to join communism, but they're not really asking you. You don't really have a choice. Just like uh, in, in this episode, it seems that they have a choice. And the leader ponies says again and again, it's all up to you. It's your choice. You, you, but certainly you will want to join us. But it's entirely up to you. Uh, 
But of course, as it uh, turns out, uh, they don't have a choice at all. Because uh, actually, after she uh, led them into the vault, um, it turns out it's a trap. All her uh, followers uh, 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 circle up on them, surround them, and she basically rips, violently rips, <laughs> all their cutie marks representing their special talents away from their body, uh, puts them into the vault against their will, and forces them all to be equal. Of course, they're not happy with that, so what happens now is that they actually get thrown into a kind of dungeon, <laughs> or at least they get locked up in a room, and they get brainwashed. They actually mention the word brainwashing. And um, they have loudspeakers in all over this room, and actually all over the town, and... Um, uh, the leader pony uh, shouts uh, stuff through the loudspeakers like Well, I don't blame you for what you tried to do here today. You've spent your whole lives thinking those marks are a good thing. Give them back! Well, now you can spend the rest of your lives here with us. And we'll teach you just how much better life can be without your cutie marks. In saneness, there is peace. Exceptionalism is a lie. Free yourself from your cutie mark. Choose a quality as your special talent. Hey, this is pretty good! Uh, we've got to find a way out of here. Try yourself, take this evening one little spoon with salt and impose to yourself not to drink water one hour. And then you'll know what Christian prisoners have suffered into the throats of which three, four great spoons with salt have been shed and then they were kept for hours without water. The worst times came the times of brainwashing. Who has not passed through brainwashing can't understand what torture it is. From five in the morning until ten in the evening, 17 hours a day, we had to sit just like this. We were not allowed to lean. For nothing in the world could we rest a little bit our head. To close your eyes was a crime. 17 hours a day you had to sit like this and hear. Communism is good. 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 Christianity is stupid. Christianity is stupid. Christianity is stupid. Nobody more believes in Christ. Nobody more believes in Christ. Give up. Give up. Give up. These days, weeks, years, we had to listen to these things. And basically, they're kept in there with all this uh, brainwashing, uh, basically until they crack and uh, until they uh, submit themselves uh, to their leader. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so they actually, it's, it's very interesting, they actually have brainwashing in there, they're addressing it basically directly. And it really, it's made clear that they will not come out um, until they basically have been brainwashed. They were locked up in there until uh, they are transformed, you know. And actually, um, the Communist Party in China uses that word in a positive manner, uh, in, in, you know, in a, in a positive light. Transformation, what they really mean is brainwashing, but they call it transformation or um, psychological education. So, for example, the labor camps they have in China, they're not just called labor camps. They're called uh, things like... The official term is kind of like re-education through labor. So they emphasize the re-education part uh, or, uh, or the transformation part. They're using all the, those kinds of words, but what they actually, of course, mean is brainwashing. Basically, if you get locked, in, into a, uh, locked up in, in, into a Chinese labor camp, and of course it's mainly uh, political dissidents or religious minorities and stuff that get locked up into those labor camps. Of course, it's also criminals, but that's uh, 
that's not the majority, actually. The majority is political dissidents. And um, they basically kept into, in those labor camps until they give up their previous uh, uh, religious or political views and um, say, okay, Communist Party was right all along since you have locked me up here for three years and <laughs> tortured me and beat me and made me do forced labor 18 hours a day. I have come to realize that you were right all along and then they're released or they're released quicker. What they're addressing here is basically the same thing. It's just that, of course, after all this is a children's show, they um, can't actually have labor camps in there, but they're getting very, very close to the real deal here, especially considering that this is a show for little girls. Anyway, of course, the way they come out of this is that they... um, uh, that they pretend that they have been brainwashed, um, but they're really not. And uh, then when they have the opportunity, uh, one of the ponies throws a bucket of water uh, onto the leader pony. And uh, as soon as the, uh, the water hits her, uh, the color comes off uh, because she used makeup to cover her cutie mark because she didn't actually give up her cutie mark. Every, she forced everybody to uh, give up their individual talents, but of course she kept hers. And uh, once this has been revealed, uh, of course uh, all the other ponies get kind of angry at the leader pony, and uh, she uh, basically flees into hiding. 